Thank you. Uh, there's a lot of prejudice and sort of pre-thinking that goes on around design and making. A lot of people set them up as two things that are antithetical. I'm actually going to talk to you today about the very interesting blurry overlap between when sort of making flips the design and when it sort of flips back. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about when it sort of ought to. Because I think this idea that design is something that's fundamentally aesthetic, that comes at the end, is actually a bad definition of design and has hurt sort of designers, has hurt sort of the world. Design is fundamentally a strategic thing that needs to come at the beginning. That change is already happening in design discourse, but it's not happening a lot outside of design discourse. I think it's going to be best to illustrate the points that I have to make using examples. Um, and I'm going to talk about how we get sort of from here to here. Uh, I am the chair of a new MFA program called Products of Design that uh, tr attempts to reimagine what the products of design are, everything from sets of instructions to social interventions to mass-produced objects to DIY and hacks and mods and design art and speculative design and sort of everything in between. Um, I want to start with a project that you may have seen before uh, called The Cloud by Richard Clarkson. Um, and so this is the very first prototype where the cloud started. This was in a making class taught by Becky Stern, uh, no stranger to, uh, to the maker movement. Um, this is the original drawing, actually. And uh, don't seem to be going here. Uh, the original hardware. And uh, this is a kind of like flocking, creating the, the cloud. This is what it looks like. It's a very beautiful image, very sort of you know, press you know, ready image. Uh, let's take a look at how it works here. So this is a motion sensing uh, lamp. Maybe we can turn the volume up just a little bit, because when this thing goes off, it is just like shattering. Let's take another look at one more video here. unbelievably impactful. We'll just give you a few seconds more on this. Uh, and then it's got color organ capabilities as well, so we'll sort of flash to the beat of the music. And he did this in the first few weeks of the program. Had never done any soldering, never done any coding, never done any Arduino. Uh, we published it on the, on the department blog um, and you know, gave away the code so you could make your own. And so this is a very interesting project because we were having discussions about whether this was going to be something very sort of, you know, like a kit. Should it be a set of instructions? Should it be something kind of, you know, like gifty and garbagey at like Urban Outfitters? Or should it be something that's like $5,000, right? Um, because it seems like something very sort of gimmicky and tricky, but when you actually experience it, it's unbelievably beautiful. I'm hoping some of the audio give you, gave you a sense of that. Uh, we wrote about it at Core 77, um, and uh, Maury Rubin, uh, famously um, of the City Bakery, uh, commissioned uh, Richard to do a constellation of clouds in his new uh, sort of all green, all sustainable cafe across the street. And so uh, very quickly, Richard had to, in some sense, go into like a limited production here. Here you can see them in the gallery, uh, and here you can see them installed in the restaurant. And so there was a little bit of added programming here where the clouds would actually talk to each other, uh, create a kind of rainstorm. Um, it showed up here uh, last year at Maker Faire. So this is sort of version two. Uh, still, the wire harness isn't entirely figured out. Um, trying to figure out how to fill the volume, you know, uh, though, that's a great picture. Um, and here it is here at Maker Faire. Uh, and here's where sort of things start to tip. So this is a remote control. It's got sort of a maker ethos. It's very, very beautiful. Uh, it's touch sensitive. It's got these uh, old fashioned switches up at the top, but then it's touch sensitive. It also has lights inside, so it glows different colors. Uh, Maker Faire, and 
Uh, and he ended up uh, putting them online and, and, uh, and selling them, this is the first sale, uh, for $3,500. Which sounds like a lot of money, except if you had to make a whole bunch of them, it's not a lot of money. Uh, so here you can see the uh, iteration. Now we're, we've gone into a vacuum-formed um, vacuum shell, another sort of beautiful picture. Fast Company picked it up. It was a full-page uh, picture in Fast Company. So now the media is sort of getting on board even more. Uh, now it's got a fancier remote, some nice uh, instructions and branding. Uh, here we have a, a printer, plotter cutter in the department. So he's starting to ship these things. Uh, and made 35 of them um, over the summer because it hit uh, a site like Colossal and board Panda, and the thing went through the roof. So this is a million views uh, of the project in about, I think, 10 or 15 days. And now, sort of taking it to another level of branding, now his name is Richard Clarkson, so now this is his branding starting to show up, um, and we're really getting into much more sort of production over the summer, of really cranking these things out. And you can tell, especially from the talks earlier today, that it, this is the moment where it's like, you know what, even at $3,500, he can't afford to make them anymore. Um, packaging, shipping, uh, it's a nice shot of the you know, staff over the summer. Uh, and then he got um, a, uh, a phone call um, by the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder uh, basketball team to potentially make a stadium-sized one so when the Thunder scored a basket, the you know, storm clouds would go off. And sort of imagine this thing you can see up at the top at around $500,000, probably not near enough to like, you know, accomplish this thing, never mind the, the level of new kinds of engineering and, and making that are involved. And so this takes it out of, out of the, uh, here you can see some more stats, and so um, it takes it out of the realm of product at that point. Now it's installation. Uh, here's, you know, the, the, the clouds around the world, and now Richard is actually uh, creating a studio in Brooklyn. And so you can see that this, this object is very interesting in the fact that it really can be a set of instructions. You could make your own. We can imagine it as a $150 sort of like crappy version of it that would just be gimmicky and, and not really like move you and not be beautiful, all the way up to $3,500. And then this whole idea of commissions and sort of what we would call design art. Uh, so I thought that that was a, a good example to start off with. Let's go sort of the, swing the pendulum all the way back. This is Julia Plevin's uh, necklace. Um, and so I give assignment, uh, an assignment when I teach. Uh, the design brief is to redesign the next thing you throw out. Uh, and so Julia had thrown out a tampon um, and took a look at sort of women and their bodies and self-knowledge and... Uh, here proposing some sort of, you know, uh, collaboration with Lululemon around uh, knowing your flow and yoga classes, um, and then came in with this. And so this is a necklace. Uh, the necklace has colored beads on it, and you can sort of count where you are on your cycle and the beads and, and know where you are. And, you know, some of you are smiling and some of you are a little uncomfortable. And imagine if you were the teacher in this class. Like, how are you going to react to this? Because this is, like, brilliant and kind of horrible. Right? <laughs> Uh, and so, you know, this is brand new, it's like the second week of the program, the students, you know, are looking at me, they're trying to figure out my reaction. Uh, so I, I thought that this was a great idea. It's just the execution of it wasn't right. It wasn't even, I, it, was, it was probably craft more than making, more than design, if you had to put them in a, on a continuum. Um, and so here was her next model. Uh, so, this, so the red beads got black and white, so you know when, uh, when your cycle starts, when you're menstruating, uh, when you're ovulating, and you essentially move this charm along the necklace to know where you are. And so now it's, it's not sort of, you know, it doesn't make you sort of wonder, like, should this happen? You're looking at this going, wow, like, this should happen. Um, and ironically, one of the men in the class had said, this is great, now I can understand my girlfriend. Right? Taking us way back into the stereotypes that th this, this designer, this woman, was trying to sort of know your body, understand your health. Um, and so we had some great debates about sort of the, the, um, the power of artifacts to influence dialogue and to provoke dialogue. And here you can see it. And then she made a, a paper one for, you know, 12 and 13 year old girls. Uh, who could make their own punch out, turn your own, make your own necklace, and handed these out in Union Square. 
Okay? So is this design, or is this making, or is this craft? Because these could be you know, published as a PDF that you could print out and cut out at home with your daughter. Okay? Blurry line. This is the edible email notifier by Catherine McElroy. Um, also showed up last year um, at Maker Faire. So Catherine also had never soldered anything, didn't, had never touched an Arduino. Uh, and she created this laser cut stand um, that essentially rewards you. Let me play a little video here. Um, let's see, this will go. No sound, no thunder. So when you check your email, you get a reward. You get the M&Ms that, that drop out of the bottle into the glass, right? Or when you don't check your email, you get rewarded with candy, right? Or when you respond to your email, you get rewarded with candy. And so this is very interesting. Should this be a product? Or should this be a kit? Or should this be a set of instructions and you should make your own? Um, and she had published the code and got a bunch of press. Mm -hmm. Here's, uh, it is on GitHub. This is Harvest by Damon Ahola. Uh, this is a, a master's thesis project. I'm going to play you a, a, sort of the final video of the project. know that you know this creates almost no energy and he worked with lots of people and did lots of math and you can light an LED for about you know one second 10 seconds if you walk you know 10 blocks you know the the, the technology is not there yet um, but when we take a look at the number of people who come in and out of Manhattan about two or three million a day and just sort of start there if everyone's collecting a little bit then there is power in numbers and so you can see like this is a completely slick design video right
So this is what's actually interesting about that project, not the slick tie-in you know, with the cafe, but the hacking part. The fact that people could take these things, and if there are school buses or anything really that moves can create energy in this, in this scenario, um, and you could steal energy. You could sort of, you know, snap it to things that move, in this case, cub, uh, uh, um, tire, uh, hap, uh, why can't I say that, hubcaps. Uh, and that's where the project actually spent a lot of time. But you don't really see that part in the slick video that comes at the end, which is a lot of the things that designers do and probably need to stop doing. And so you can see it moves over from something that's, that's a hack to something that is uh, co-branded. You know, and you could be cynical about it and say co-opted. Yeah. You can actually s watch it happen between those two videos. Uh, this is Lucid by Clay Kippen. Um, uh, so Clay is really interested in photography. Um, really missed the, the, the sounds, the tactility of cameras. I think we all do. Um, you know, created some videos to really drive that point home, uh, and and created uh, these, this platform called Lucid. And so the idea is that you go online here um, and you uh, grab a model of a of a camera and the corresponding picture of what that camera would make, and then you can uh, manipulate it um, with sliders along the bottom, and the uh, the camera will change and the picture will change. Uh, here it is, uh, so that's warping, here it is, focal length, and aperture is coming up. Yeah. Uh, and took a look at the business model, um, and then, and, and potential tie-ins, right? Stuff that designers do. And then looking forward, looking also at other kinds of things that have gone from analog to digital, and digital back to analog, uh, like these 3D printed records that were very popular uh, in, the, in the media a couple of years ago, and took a look at other things that you could teach um, like physics and chemistry and, and some mechanics and, and sound. Uh, Shine is Cassandra M Michelle where I started. Uh, so she did a project on power napping and the idea that, you know, if you nap for 40 minutes, it's actually worse than napping for 20 minutes. And um, uh, it also matters like how you're woken up, that you're woken up gradually uh, as well as the wavelength. So this is the first model that she built uh, and, and, and you know, from a design perspective, we had to strip strip that away and said, well, why are you covering it all in this foam? It needs to be made of what it's made of. And so ingeniously working the wiring through the beading came up with this, you know, very beautiful headdress. Um, and then again, what designers do is they'll take an image like this and they'll turn it into this. Uh, this is where I want to wrap up. And they'll add that level of, of branding, of graphic design. You can see, again, things moving um, very deliberately from here to here. This is a kind of persuasion uh, that designers do that sort of is available to everybody and you can make up your mind of whether you think that this is a, a, a positive thing, moving the needle in the right way. Um, to end, uh, Andres uh, had redesigned, uh, had thrown out a, um, a ice cream tub and redesigned it, you know, renderings and fired up the vacuum former and ultimately came up with this idea of um, having tabs that you could eat down to one tab sort of per day and then tear it off. Uh, and so we really love that idea, so then he created this. Yeah. Um, and so we know that, you know, the manufacturer's haagen is not going to, like, you know, put five pieces of plasticated, you know, cardboard in every carton of ice cream. Um, but this, as a piece of discursive design, is a piece of critical design to provoke, you know, commentary and hopefully some humor and charm uh, is where I want to leave things off. Thank you so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.